Anyway, we've made it into the medieval era, which is lovely. I'm tempted to put feudal contract in and really pump out units here, so I shall. Given how many compromises and limitations I have with my tech anyway, I need as big an army as I can get. Oh, and everyone's in a dark age. Beautiful. So what you want to see? I think I'm going to stick with monumentality because cheap builders means that it's really cheap on gold, and I'm just able to make sure that all of my territory is improved. And these cities are making up for the fact that my tech is really weak weird by just being awesome. Like I've got a lot of production in a very small amount of space. 36 production, 43, 35. Lublin is going to help itself out massively with that industrial zone. Yeah, my empire's doing good. It's just everything else around it. That they, this is the problem I've got. <laughs> Nothing else is working. Victor now has garrison commander, which means I've got a lot of loyalty pressure on cities around me. Still leveling up trebuchets with oh, beautiful attacks like that. Awesome stuff to see. I don't mind if I do actually. I I think I'm gonna just nab a little bit of culture with that trebuchet, get the attack with this one, and then move my musket in to take Krakow. The good thing about doing it this way round is I actually got the era score in this age. Plus four. Lovely. That'll help with the Golden Age next turn. I, I think Warsaw is now next. They have built medieval walls. I'm expecting to fight medieval walls everywhere, to be honest. Keep the city. Oh, go on then. Was oh, that builder for me? Oh, thank you so much. I'm not gonna try and attack. What oh, do I attack Cahokia? I could try and pillage it, you know. Yeah, I can never get the 50. 50% card in, but it doesn't stop the pillaging being quite fruitful. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. Oh, she's gonna throw the book at me. Quite literally. What's that? Only eight damage from Cahokia. What are you doing? Are you literally also throwing books at me? That was terrifyingly ineffective. Yes, I will pillage everything in your land if you insist. That is very kind of you. Quick, divert a few units over. <laughs> we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go and just pillage everything. Why not? This is actually quite good economically for me. It's Especially the faith. Especially the faith. You gotta have faith. 280 of it to get a settler. It's not much. Oh, that's right. I can't clear marshes ever because I don't have irrigation. <laughs> oh no. There's so many of these limitations that keep coming back to haunt me. They really are just repeatedly coming back to haunt me. Look at that. Plus five commercial hub though. Delicious. Oh, that's right. I can build a legion. I'm in this really weird phase where I have more than 10 iron, but less than 20. So I can't build the mana arms. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get the era score for doing this. Watch, that's just eaten all of my iron. And I'm going to sell the remaining iron. So hopefully I can finish this thing before I would get the iron to then replace it. That's genius. Oh, Ursa. Sometimes I'm just proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Trebuchet. Shells. Don't mind if I do. As expected, the city that Poland lost a little while ago has flipped, and that gives me era score. That's why I didn't attack it. I just wanted to be patient, claim the era score for taking it that way. A lot better. People often ask me, Ursa, why don't you chop forests on hills? The answer is, I do. But only in some circumstances. In that particular instance, my builder only had one charge. So I thought, well, I'm not going to just chop the forest down and then leave it alone. I'll put a lumber mill in. But in other ones, like over here, I have chopped the forest down to put a mine over. About turn 100, that's when I start to chop in earnest. If you chop too early game, the amount of production you get per woods is just not worth it. But the chop production scales, as does district cost. But what doesn't scale is things like walls, granaries, libraries, low cost buildings. So if you wait until later in the game, a wood will give you a free building. Whereas if you do it too early, it will not. So there you go. Bit of insight into the chaos that is Ursa's mind. Oh, again, I can't remove bananas, can I? Is that an irrigation thing? Of course it is. So I was planning on building a bath and connecting up these two industrial zones. Nope, can't do that. <laughs> Never mind. Also, how unfair is it that Trajan, who gets a free city centre building, doesn't get one if you claim a city via loyalty? Come on, it's my whole thing. Let me have it. If I buy this crossbow, I will get metal casting, which means, oh, now I can do bombards. I've got four Four knights are coming in per turn, but I have access to quite a bit more. And bombard upgrades would be very handy indeed. I don't have a general that can help bombards, so I can't move and fire. That is the problem. But if that's the worst of it, you know I can live with that. They're still very powerful. Lots of era score for a commercial hub. Pingala's established now as well, so Lugdunum. Huge yields, which is beautiful. Let's get this market going. And I will try and treat myself to Apadana. I don't know what it'll be used for, but it's probably something that it'll be useful, right? 250 science for each adjacent mountain tile. Oh, that's nice. I have some plus four mountain. No, there's a plus five in there. Oh, I mean, you can't beat that. Sure.
middle of the mountain tunnel, right? So here we go. I'm going to boost through siege tactics. What's next? Ah, this is one of those annoying things about this whole challenge. I'm going to get printing before I get education. So I can't physically get to universities because I don't know what a university is. It's fine. Sorry, Kahokia. You shouldn't have messed with me. Oh, I did make the legion in the end as well. Excellent. Quick, Roman legion. You can make a difference in a world fueled by muskets. Actually, I do have a build charge. I could put a Roman fort down. That would be a really good way of making sure I could use a trebuchet without it dying. I like that. Urban warfare. Oh, go on then. If I have to. If you insist, I will use urban warfare, but only because you're insisting. Right, one, two, and three. Oh, yes. This is why you bring multiple trebuchets. Multiple trebuchets to the trebuchet party. Bisheng. We missed out on quite a few of the early engineers, so no Imhotep or anything. But the equal problem is because I can't get a harbor, which is Celestial Navigation, which is a branch tech, I can't make my usual move of putting down Mausoleum in order to double the charges. That's a bit annoying. So engineers are not as important in this game as I had hoped. I didn't really twig it until just recently, to be fair. But yeah, that's a problem. Oh, that is a Renaissance wall in Radom. The good thing this city is actually damaged. They can't build a Renaissance wall in this city until they fix that damage. So I'm glad we attacked Warsaw when we did. Radom will be more difficult. But to be fair, we're not really bypassing walls at the moment. We are engaging in their destruction pretty actively. Yeah, I, I think we're doing the right thing here. I don't think there's any reason to charge in here. Let's just wait a second. Let my other troops come in slowly, but surely. Oh, this is the Eureka for printing. Oh, Bisheng. This, oh, it's so rare. So rare that Eureka is actually useful. I love it. Okay. Well, Apadan is awesome, but I could get something else now. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Printing from Galileo. Amazing. That's exactly what you want to see. Oh, actually, just, just gave me loads of stuff. But dress. Okay, right. So what do we want to now? Ballistics. Field cannons. <laughs> okay. And then line inventory. And then it looks like after that point, we're going to go for number three. Where's number three? Astronomy. And then banking. Then cartography. Goodness me, we are flying everywhere. Well, we're only 14 techs away from industrialization, though. <laughs> it could be worse. Is that going to be Warsaw taken? Oh, you better believe it is. This steady progression of city taking is awesome. What this effectively means is I'm getting 20% production eternally in my nation. And Apadana is going to be really helpful, actually, because there are two uh, scientific city-states on this map. It means there's some good university bonus. If, if there's two scientific city-states, I like to go for universities. Plus eight on a building. Yes, that's what you want to see. I don't think at this moment it makes sense at all for me to make peace with Poland. I might as well take them out of the game. We have 400 grievances with them. I will get a lot less grievances with the rest of the world if I just remove them. And then they, you know, they won't be complaining to everyone. Oh, Ursa took us out of the game. Oh, what's what's going on here? You sort of look at them and go, nah, no one really minds. I think it's the best way. I think it's the best for everyone. The wall of catapult death lines up again. And yeah, I'm going to take out this encampment. There is a fun choice. I could choose to liberate this city to the Cree. That would give me a big reduction in grievances. It would also give me some diplo favor that I could use to sell, but I'm likely to go to war with the Cree. I guess I am allied to them, but I'm not going to be allied to them for long. In fact, it's actually expiring this turn, so I could just betray them and unify this continent, or I could wheel my army in the other direction, take out Coupe and then Scythia. 600 military strength, though, compared to Cree's 45. They have no army right now. They are so lured into this crazy war that's destroyed all of their troops with Poland and the fact that they're allied to me, which means they think, hey, Ursa's going to look after me. Trajan, he's going to build a beautiful army of peace and love on this continent that will keep everyone safe. And we're thinking, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, of course we will. That's exactly what's going to happen. So I don't really fancy taking the city and then declaring war on it a second time. I won't give it back. But that was an option. Like, I, I'm thinking about it. I, I considered it. We're not going to do it this time. But there you go. Right, encampment is destroyed. That was easy. Pushing through on this city. Radon will need a bit more in the way of reinforcements, but we are producing them. I, we've got units coming from the back line. We've got man-at-arms being produced in a few locations as the nitre is flowing through. Those are becoming muskets. The 
the Roman army never sleeps, never stops growing, except when it's being killed, then it stops growing. But we don't talk about those times. <laughs> That's what history rewriting is for. Hmm. Do I really want to move my troops away from your borders? Mm, I'm just going to ignore you for now. How about that? Oh yeah, military emergency. I had forgotten about that one. Who will buy my diplo favor? England will. How much of it can you buy before you bankrupt yourself? That much. You want a joint war with Tamiris, do you? No. No, you don't need to give me that. Actually, I can sell some to Cree and just claim some gold from them. That'll do. I'm still settling. A combination of monumentality settlers. Settlers I'm building. So I've got one that Rome built, one I bought, and then this one down here I stole from Poland. Look! Huzzah! Sprawling empire. Rome sprawls in all directions. I feel much better about that now. Oh, you know what? I keep settling cities assuming I'm going to build harbours. No Ursa. <laughs> no harbours for you. 44 gold per turn. Getting desperate now. Hey, that doesn't mean I need to accept the offer. It just means that I'm doing something right. Something really nice about capturing AI lands is you get to look at the land and go, why didn't you put this farm triangle down? Come on, you get to come fix everything. I love it. I love it. Like I can chop down this rainforest and then make a beautiful little farm patch between the two cities. I'm adding a service. I'm fixing everything. That's exactly what's happening. And our crossbows arrive. One, a two, and a three. The walls aren't quite down, but they're almost down. Oh yeah. I like checking in with deals of people that have denounced me because it always says that no one will do a trade with you if they've denounced you. But look at this. Luxuries. 200 gold, 11 gold per turn. Sweden can't help themselves. Another city flip with loyalty. Excellent. That's what you like to see. Now, England, we do want to attack at some point, but I'm just wondering about whether or not to renew the friendship. I don't think my army is going to be 30 turns of speed to go and take out Cree and then immediately take England out. So I'm actually going to offer the friendship to them and I'm going to say military alliance. Yes. Oh, England likes a military alliance. I will be able to pull England in, I think, into my war with Cree. She's already in my war with Poland, which does help quite a bit actually but prioritize my trebuchet is getting the experience i want as many of them with a level two upgrade as possible excellent and another city has been taken lovely liberate decree i don't think so Cree is still on ancient walls. Oh, okay. We've got to go after Cree immediately now. What I might do is make a new army to take on Poland. There's no need to rush this, but there is an opportunity to take two of Cree's bigger cities, maybe even three, on the coast with the army that's here right now with 45 military strength. I, I don't think I want to let this pass up. More cities, you say? More. Let's see what this military emergency pans out to be like. Cree might actually attack me here. It wouldn't be too bad. Oh, no, it's a moderate flood not an extreme flood oh they've just broken some plantations ah, that's annoying i don't think i can fix those yeah kree's gone for me kree attacked me they saw me take over their old city and not give it to them and they thought hang on a second this is our city and i'm going oh no you've misunderstood the situation kree this was not for you now if i don't have the tech i don't think i can i don't think i can fix the no i can fix it interesting i can fix a broken plantation even if I can't make a plantation myself. That is really good to know. I thought it was a bit like districts, like holy sites, for instance, I cannot fix. But there you go. We've got the mechanics of a society wrong on that. We don't mind at all. Better to be wrong on something that gives us an advantage. Right, I'm going to take a little strike on this city and a little strike on this city. Now, this means unless they've already started building the walls, they now cannot start building medieval walls. The tone is now set for this combat and they still only have 45 military strength. They've gone in on an emergency here without thinking about about the consequences at all. Poland's gone to them and said, hey, we've lost a city. And Cree is like, oh no, what an emergency. We'll come in and join in. And then they've gone to war and gone, hey, hang on a sec. Caesar was ready for me. No, no, we don't want this war at all. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, well, that's tough, isn't it? I'm really getting better at this in a game of Civ though. Just put down Liang and funnel builders through her. Like these builders with monumentality can go to all corners of my empire with Rome's roads. The infrastructure that comes from all roads lead to Rome makes it very easy for me to move about. Handy. Very handy. How important to me is the invention card? This is a good question. I've only got one wildcard policy and it's very, very difficult to, to know what I'm doing. Beetle contract I'm using a ton of. Craftsman is a lot of good and there's nothing else I can really put in military policies right now. I'm getting 15 science per turn, but would it make more sense to put Republican legacy in? Would I get more science from that? An invention. I can only use my engineers once, which isn't ideal, but this would give me pretty much free reign over the three engineers. Da Vinci would give me a lot of culture. Oh, 
this is really, really difficult. I, builders are very, very handy for me. I'm going to take a gamble. Normally, I preach about the fact that happy cities give you so many more yields. So I'm actually going to get rid of natural philosophy and put in Republican legacy. Now, I'm on 101 science. Just for happiness. Yeah, look at that. I only lost six science. And this will improve all of the other yields across my empire. Like my capital is now neutral happy. Rome is now neutral happy. It's a huge difference. Absolutely massive difference. One attack. Two attack. Walls are down. Three attacks. And can the musket kill? It cannot. So do I wait? Don't know. Don't know. Now I might as well just strike. I think Cree should be pretty quick. In comparison to Poland, that, that Poland was a very, very difficult conquer. Cree should be a little bit easier. Where is the industrial zone in this city? I don't know. Don't know. I have no idea which city I was selecting. Oh, this one. Uh, we're the first into the industrial era. That's what happens when you weirdly have to beeline tech. But we've just unlocked Kurosars and Field Cannons. Kurosars is a very strong pillaging unit. Field Cannon gives my cities a big strength, but is also a huge unit killer unit. I mean, look at this crossbow. That's already doing tons of damage, but as a Field Cannon, that would basically command the respect of any battlefield it was on. It's never a bad thing, that. Still putting the squeeze on as we attack in. Yeah, this is doing very nicely for us. Oh, I missed that Corsa there. Ah, uh, should have used the crossbow to attack that. Never mind, the capital's taken as a huge chunk of Era score, and hopefully it's loyal. Of course it's loyal. Everywhere wishes to be part of Rome. You just don't know it yet. I'm introducing people to the idea that they're already Roman. They've been Roman for as long as I've been in existence. The Apadana. Two envoys when I build a wonder, including Apadana in this city. That is beautiful because, as I've mentioned before, there are scientific city-states on this map, and you know what I like? Scientific city-states. University power, I say. Gee, Lugdunum is growing really nicely. I'm very happy with its growth. Got a lot of rainforest as well. I could build Chichen Itza. How far am I off mercantilism? When's it? Oh, it's actually coming up in two civics time. So I was wondering whether or not it would make sense here for me to just chop this out for population. But weirdly, Chichen Itza would give... Oh, it doesn't give any food to rainforest. Would be good for an entertainment complex. And actually speaking of it, Colosseum is something that I really should build. I am Roman and it would help Pingala City a lot. I just need to find a tile that works for it. That really, really ruins a farm triangle, which pains me a little bit. Bit, but I could move the farm over and I would chop that rainforest out. Yeah, okay, this isn't actually too bad an idea. So what I'm going to do, pop the entertainment complex there, pop Colosseum on this tile, change this over to a farm and this over to a farm as well, but make sure that both of those chops are in the city. Although Lublin can't move this over, amazingly, because it still belongs to Poland, technically. Never thought I'd see the day. Yeah, look, actually, this farm triangle is really good. I don't mind this at all. Right, down you go. Entertainment complex. This will actually help my capital stay really happy, which means the science will be really tasty. Yeah, lovely. Chop, chop. And we're building universities now. So two envoys into Bologna. Oh, 121 science. That was a big change. Still settling. This is a nice road. Still getting sources of honey. Still buying builders, which are then running over to my new cities. Oh, there's something delicious about playing Rome. I do love it. With this little kill, I believe. Yes, that is a level four crossbow. Double shooting and I'm going to upgrade you to a field cannon immediately. <laughs> Do I believe with a few little cheeky shots here I can take this city which is very difficult to say. Now is it going to be loyal? Please be loyal. Of course it's loyal. We're all Roman really. Very usefully we have taken over Statue of Zeus. That means we now have 50% bonus production towards Pike and Shot which is really handy. We can actually see muskets 11 turns Pike and Shot 9 and they have the same in fact actually pike and shot is a little more expensive so suddenly we have a new type of unit we can use the old pike and shot we are not going to get anti-tank crew for about seven million years but that's okay it's good to have an anti-cavalry unit speaking of hello timiris this is a fun way of just leveling up a unit i'm sat on a roman fort in my own territory just getting shot by the ai it's healing faster than it's taking damage but it's also leveling up very very nice i think i shall take advantage of the statue of zeus and start to build up quite a few pike and shots on the border cities like eight turns go on then six turn coliseum that's actually really quick oh no seven turns i do apologize it changed its mind still everything i want in a government i think it is oh i'm looking forward to this though my capital really needs this you see this this is a devastating flood that's just killed two population in rome you know what that is that's a dam that i'm literally building right now <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, sometimes. Sometimes this game, it, uh, it tests you. <laughs> it really does. Another city's walls fall. Can't take it this turn unless my crossbow can get in here and fire the same turn, which it can. Which means maybe I can take the city. I can. Oh, excellent. These two cities down here are better than I thought because Yosemite is down there. Oh, I thought I was sweet enough, but look at all this sugar. Mmm, and turtles. Yummy. Poland has muskets. Oh no, what will I do? Oh wait, that's right. I'm just gonna stand on top of my Roman fort and be badass. Come get me, I say. Come get me. I dare you. I will say this is my double firing crossbow. I can't yet afford the upgrade for it, but it's pretty kill, which of course is a normal phrase. It's pretty kill. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, another free settler. AI is just throwing these at me at the moment. I guess they keep building all of the settlers assuming they're going to need them and then they're getting very disappointed when I just sort of come through with my army and say hey you don't mind if I borrow these do you? Oh look at that. By defending a hill across a river and then just not attacking Poland keeps losing all of their troops trying to attack me. Defense is so important in Civ 6. Right I'm gonna vote for myself. I'd love it if we had trade routes to me and double great engineers. I have no voting power. I can't predict what AI is gonna do. This is just total rubbish. No engineers at all. Ah oh, lovely. And then trade routes to Pericles get more gold. How close was I to an engineer? Pretty close. I could get Da Vinci if I wanted, which would be a lot of culture on my workshops, and I have a lot of workshops. Yeah, it's tempting, isn't it? Cree's northern city has flipped, and it's going to go to Poland. Interesting. I thought I'd have enough population around it given my golden age, but never mind. Colosseum Rome was going to throw legions of people into fights endlessly to make ourselves happy. Yeah, seems like a very Roman thing to do. We like it. Now let's see what this is going to do for my capital. It says plus two and actually I'm getting zero from luxuries right now. Interesting. That means my capital will genuinely get happier if we can boost the amenities in this city. Oh, I like that. Good to know. Good to know. Well, let's get a university and up to 154 science now and we are in fourth. Only four techs behind Savia. Good. That's what we want to see. This dam is almost finished. You watch. In two turns, this is going to flood again. I'm calling it now. I'm standing out in a field in the middle of a thunderstorm, looking up at the sky, screaming, I dare you. You wouldn't, you wimp. That's what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, flood me, I dare you. Another city falls. Keep that production bandwagon rolling. I have a couple of units now. I don't think Poland's got a big army. Now, only a hundred, so I think we could probably try and siege this city. There are cities here, or defenses, but it's going to cause us a little bit of a problem. But if we move our units in carefully, Poland should be pretty easy to contain. Yeah, this musket's not going to get out and attack me if I just stop it from getting out. And I'm going to battle cry and make sure we've got something that can take on their musket. Move my legion over as well because this may convince Poland to hit my weak units rather than my strong ones. Oh, I finally settled my Petra city by the way. It's gonna be a while before we can get Petra, uh, namely 365 turns, but never say I'm not an ambitious man. <laughs> I'm going to try and build it anyway. It's one day of Petra for every day of the year. In all seriousness, Filippo is still available so there is a way of rushing. Need to get the engineer though. This renaissance wall is going to be an absolute pain but we will start damaging it and already the city is under siege. So the beginnings of this assault, well, these are working very well. Gives us time to come in and pillage anything we need to. Actually, even this crossbow with two attacks would do quite a lot of damage, though I wonder. AI says it doesn't want to trade with me, but I bet I can get some sort of trade out of them here. Yes, I thought so. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> He's being really stingy. Okay, oh, that's better. Yeah, these are the sort of deals I need. I just need a little bit of gold now. How much do I need? 310. And ta-da! That's better. 53 damage against the city. Did I mention that I've got military science now? Military academies, line infantry, there's a lot we've just unlocked. The next uh, tech that we're going to unlock is astronomy. Then we're going banking. Then cartography. So we can finally cross the sea. Beautiful. Pikeman. I know what pike and shot is, but maybe that's useful. And then we're dipping back into this bottom side of the tree to get rifling. Scientific theory. Square rigging. Mass production 
production and then again back down to steel and refining. Tell you what, steel and refining will be good though. If I can pick up oil and then artillery, I may not have much tech, but I will have some really good up-to-date siege weaponry and that's kind of important. Now if you watch this channel long enough, you know that I hate spies, but I'm going to build a spy because I'm going to put them into England and make sure that I'm building up a bit of an army to go and send over them with as much combat bonus as we can get. I'm going to do this properly. Plus, cavalry in six turns? Yeah, go on then. There's a lot of cards that I haven't unlocked yet, but things like Grand Army? That's not far off now. Lightning Warfare is another card I want. Troop building cards. I'm making a decent effort to keep my army up to date, to have it at full power at all times, and it's actually working. I'm maintaining a lot of momentum through every battle here. Don't mind if I treat myself to Da Vinci as well. I've got a lot of workshops. I think I've mentioned this already, but I do. I have a lot of workshops. I'm looking forward to using them. Sorry, what? What is that bombard doing in my land? Why? Also, Cree, you're offering me eight gold per turn. This is your last city. I'm not going to take that deal. I feel like that was an offer made out of hope rather than sincere belief, but you know, never mind. Cree, out of the game. More era score. I'm sorry. Five era score, it'll do. I'm already hitting the golden age and we've got so much time before the end of the Renaissance era, but never mind. This army, I think we're going to actually put into the sea, unbelievably, and head round to attack England from Leeds. That could be fun. How much does this field cannon do in the siege of Poland? Eh, it's actually battering the walls down decently. Need more equipment, more troops. The, the reinforcements are on the way. We do need to bring them down faster. Also, I now control Fez. That is a turnaround for the books. Lovely. 188 science per turn. We are starting to pump this economy forward now. I am inevitable. That's what I am. How much culture will Da Vinci give me? I think I've got about seven workshops. So there's a radio boost. That's okay. Got about 21. Yeah, so about seven workshops. That's really good good culture. Meanwhile, you'll be pleased to know, only 362 turns on Petra now. Excellent. The Bombard did 11 damage. The Trebuchet, 12. That just puts it in context with how much this field cannon does. That's 4 and 6 of 10 in total. It's like having another piece of siege equipment. A fun little mini game here is actually trying to beat Poland before this city ticks down because I just can't be bothered to take another city. <laughs> it's really important that I do that. So, 3 turns effectively to take this city on. The walls are beginning to fall now, which means the city is starting to take a little bit of damage, but it cannot heal, which is handy. The muskets can start to attack. I'm going to give them another turn. I want to make sure that when we do attack, we're ready for it. Come on. Come on. Yellow health. Oh, that's a good start. We are almost there. We are almost to the point we can start doing some serious damage now. Actually, Sun Tzu, you just bring these reinforcements in. I've got more attacks coming in by the day. Still also making cities. Anything that requires a plantation, that's what I'm settling on. Oh no, there's no housing. That's a good thing I can get a bath down. I actually live in a bath, don't you know? I put my pillow at the tap end and that's where I sleep. Am I building a second cheeky army? No, I wouldn't do that. No second cheeky army. No. Incidentally, yeah, 13 turns after my military alliance. What? Hmm? Oh no, I'm sure you are just hearing things. I'm sure. Reinforcements are arriving. They are arriving and they're arriving fast. The walls are now below half health, which means we're now doing over the heart of the damage we should. This is the tipping point, I think. Let's go. One, two, three, and then four. I reckon we can take the city next turn, which means we might be able to take this. Now, the question is, which way is that going to flip once Poland's been taken out of the game? Will I be able to put enough pressure on it that I will claim the city in that last turn? Or is Poland going to have enough pressure on me that they will effectively rise from the grave like a phoenix? What even looks like a phoenix with a crown on it? <gasps> Maybe that's what's going to happen. Actually, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind if that happened. It would be quite, it would be quite beautiful in a frustrating and annoying way. Oh, I just moved the line inventory away from, I didn't notice Kahokia had moved a unit there. Ah, well, luckily for me, I can just go ancient walls with the letter and shoot it dead. But that could have been annoying. I reckon Kume has now made for me in excess of about 15 to 20 builders. It's absolutely crazy. And with monumentality, I'm just like, mm, head this way and I'll forget about you for a bit and then you'll arrive. It's amazing. Amazing. All of my faith, because I've picked up so many holy sites, it's all going into monumentality now. Down to 178 turns on Petra. Whoa, and 89 now. Goodness me. Lightning speed on Petra. 
<laughs> Lightning speed. Go on. This should be enough. This should be enough to take the city out. Let's just get all of these hits in. Yes. Attack. Are you going to do it? Poland is out. That was a war. That was an epic war. We have strengthened ourselves massively through that because we were very much under the thumb. But Poland, like the Cree, you will regret. And you do regret standing against Rome. It's fine. You can be Roman now. So it still says it's flipping to Poland. I don't know if that's updated itself because I do put the most pressure on it now. I am really intrigued to see what happens here. This could be bad news for me. It could be very, very bad news for me. Let's just quickly heal my troops for a second and hope that Poland doesn't spring back into existence because they very much might. In the meantime, I'm going to put my spy into Liverpool, I think. Oh, no, no, I'm still allied. Still can't do that. Okay, so I've got to set up for the next person I'm fighting. Who is that likely to be? I could go off to Coupe. Coupe's a bit everywhere and I don't particularly want this. Uh, England. What, where is this settler going? Don't ask. <laughs> don't, don't ask. And you, you don't want to know the answer. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Do I send it just to Bologna? And I haven't leveled the spy up. I don't know how I'm going to fight. Maybe it's Greece. Is Greece who we go for? They have great works. They've got mines. They've got campuses. More importantly, their army is probably the weakest out of everyone except Coupe. Coupe's got great lighthouse. That would help me to move around a lot. All right, let's go for Coupe. Let's go for Coupe. I'm going to send you down to this random city because my spy probably won't need to move on from that. Oh no, the volcano went off. Ignore the military emergency success. That's got nothing to do with anything. It went off and we lost two population in my capital again. Oh, game, stop treating me this way, please. This is where all my best pop live. I don't want to lose them. Yep, the more I think about it, the more I think going coupe into Greece, into Scythia is the better route for me. I'm going to leave England. England are the only people that are trading with me. They're actually funding most of my economy. I'm going to leave them alone. England, I mean, I, I, I share a land board with them. I can bomb them later. It's fine. Savia is a bit more worrying. I should get over them quickly, but Greece, Coupe, this is an easy take. Let's do it. By the way, in a game like this, I am not bothering to build wonders myself. I'm letting the AI build them, and I'm going to go and take them. Way easier that way. Annoyingly, Poland did appear into the game again. We suspected that might happen. They don't have loyalty, but I can't actually declare war on her for another 10 turns. So I'm not going to hang my army around. We're actually going to move. And as mentioned, send this all to coupe. Ah, uh, it's my favorite bit of any war. Endlessly moving my units forward. Oh, that could be a problem with coupe. That's an ironclad. Ah, uh, you know one thing I don't have? A navy. I'm sure we'll think of something, right? Mm, maybe. Nationalism. That will help me to catch up with the arm strength of coupe. See what that does. We've got Mendelev. Awesome. Economics. Chemistry. Two very decent boosts. And Armani is in Valletta. I'm just trying to work out if that's the best is. I would quite like Hokia. This has the road between my seaport and my land units. It's really annoying moving everyone through here. Oh, I wish I could just get envoys, but I can't. I've got to wait for this all to just work itself out. What are we doing? Civil engineering. Oh, colonialism is in two tech or two civics time. That's good. Grand army. That's really handy. What I'm going to try and do is combine promoted units with unpromoted units just to make sure that we get the most value out of this. But oh yeah, these, these troops are going to be way more powerful and I'm loving it. Antium. A city on a tiny island. Yeah, this will be a good staging post, I think. You know what would be handy? A harbour. <laughs> that would be very handy. Poland, still founding cities. None of them are going to be loyal. I don't mind that. You may have noticed I have a lot of gold. i doing a lot of trading, but what I'm not doing is spending any gold on actually upgrading units. Not until I get way closer. At the moment, their maintenance cost is a lot lower because I'm paying for things like archers and mana arms. I mean, yes, I could absolutely now upgrade to line inventory, but they're ages away from a front line of coupe and they're going to take a long time to get there so I just don't want to pay the maintenance cost so I'll move them closer and as we get to the front line then I'll upgrade them I think that's a good combo tell you what though 14 nighter per turn I need more my empire is absolutely crushing how many troops I'm making we've got line inventory everywhere trebuchets bombards I am burning the army at all sides right now every city just pump 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 I need an overwhelming army because Saivia Saivia is looking really strong renaissance walls 77 strength. We've got Coupe with 80 in Renaissance walls. Ideally, I kind of want to strike at the same time I get artillery. We've got to wait a long time until we get observation balloons, so it's not going to be super useful. At least it'll be something. Public works. Excellent. This is not a bad set of government, actually. I'm looking forward to natural history. Then I think we can push my empire into just being content. We've got quite a few cities taking a minus one immunity penalty. I don't like that. I'm room. Let's build more coliseums so we can kill more people in combat and laugh at them. Ha ha. That's how it works, right?
died. My governors have been working behind the scenes just on fun stuff. I've actually now got Moksha with laying on of hands. This is an amazing governor because now I can heal all of my units in one turn and just pop them into Coupe's capital when I take it and use it as a staging post to attack Saivir. Square rigging is also one movement from bark units. That's massively helpful. That's really good. Mass production next, then steel, then refining. I can't get coal power and I can't get a coal mine because I don't know what coal is because of this annoying way. Why can't I do industrialization before the modern era tech, eh? Ugh. I feel like this is what the AI plays like all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know this is this is a funny challenge for us, but I, I get the horrible feeling that AI is always playing like this. My spy has arrived with Coupe. Excellent. Listening post. My first spy will do that. When I get a second one, then I'll try and promote them. But that plus three combat strength in all situations? That might prove very, very handy. The industrial era. We have colonialism. Oh, that's more envoys, but more importantly, let's see what's happening. Poland's an a dark age. Excellent. Okay, that was really annoying. They were starting to recover loyalty a little bit, so yeah, no more. I was making sure my border cities were very, very populous, and it's working well. This English settler, by the way, has managed to march all the way over to this point, almost settle, and is now going back. Like, what's going on? I have no idea. Let's not think about it. Greece, dark age. Coupe, dark age. Oh, all of my targets. They're all in dark ages. We are going to make a choice here, actually. Now, this is the option. Either I take the movement speed, so that I can embark my units faster and keep the cities loyal when I take them over because I believe these are a second continent. Yep, they are. We go reform the coinage to give myself more gold and a more steady gold supply. Heartbeat of Steam gives me generally more production because I have a lot of campuses, but I don't have the double campus card in. And to arms means I get no grievances and I get extra military unit production. I'm going to arms. We're just going to go all in. Roman Empire, industrial era, 40 turns to arms means we can declare a beautiful golden age war against coupe which i'm looking forward to what more do you need actually i'll tell you what i do need a field cannon there you go scorched earth done you know i'm only two civics away from urbanization and forced modernization oh i can actually buy or upgrade units cheaper that is really handy so a lot of the less upgraded units like legion mana arms things i do want to take into battle i'm just going to leave them on the coast for a second there are some cheap upgrades although some of them aren't that expensive like this is a level two trebuchet i will treat myself to the bombard there that's there's no point waiting on that one what i'm about to get scorched earth for total war so i will have a raid card i can put in as well oh that's good that's really handy i think i am going to keep england on side yes this alliance serves me very well you know i'm wondering with 82 strength how difficult is this landing on coupe gonna be i've only got bombards even at the best case scenario that'll be 60 75 bombard strength against a renaissance wall with about 90 strength i might get ripped apart. This is a really, really easy landing on Greece, though. And they're in a dark age. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to go for Greece, aren't I? I just, it just looks like so much of an easier ride. And uh, my troops are a little bit faster now. So yeah, I'm gonna send some of my cores. Take Pharsalos, Nosos, Rhodes, and then head down and attack Saivir at the same time, and then go for Coupe. This is gonna be a world war, of which the likes has never been seen in this game so far. I should feel bad for what I am about to do, but I don't really. We circumnavigated the globe. Who would have thought that was possible? Well, us. This is a very long way I'm going around, but yep, we'll make it to Greece eventually. Here is the aforementioned ironclad. You know what? With oligarchy, with intel, I'm not doing too badly, but I just I just don't want to fight the 82 strength city without reinforcements. It's such a difficult landing. I don't have much navy. My biggest problem has been I only unlocked the navy cards or the navy techs relatively recently, and I don't have press gangs, which is making it really really tricky. Goodbye Poland. It was fun playing with you but uh, I need you to go pretty quickly. I'm pushing almost 2000 military strength now so I'm finally going to take Grand Army out and pop in Total War. Different game franchise, that one, but it's still still good. Hello, Victoria. Would you like a Golden Age War with Pericles? Oh, you would. Go on then, if you insist. And then we go. There's no walls, but they're being built. We don't like that. We don't like that at all. Let's get in as quick as we can. Quickly, quickly now. Uh, annoyingly, Cahokia has just declared war on me. I would rather not fight you, but equally all of my envoys, I mean, I don't have many envoys. I am, I am struggling to field envoys. Fine, I'll grab it. If only just because it's right in the middle of my empire, but 
That is a bit annoying. Yeah, the walls appear literally the turn I arrive. How is that always the case? Always the case. Never mind. We we're expecting it. We've got steel. Oh, that means we can get artillery if we get oil, which I'm hoping we do, considering the absolute colossal landmass we own. If we don't get uh, any oil, I'm going to be a bit disappointed. You'll see I am now switching back over to economy. We've been keeping my science really quite high. Faith is pretty good. Gold is an issue, though. So I'm now starting to focus on commercial hubs getting a lot of industry down. I am building a few boats, but my boats are, are not very good. Battleships would be cool though. Again, don't know what coal is. They, yeah, actually, what are we doing? Refining, economics, industrialization. Yeah, that'll do. One mistake I made is I didn't buy enough siege towers and I can't make them anymore because they're totally obsolete. I am regretting that. But apart from that, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. I'm using this caravel to escort the cavalry past. We'll get this line inventory. We're starting to just swarm around. I want to do a, you know, en masse naval invasion. Oh, I've actually managed to go round the world and find another Greek city on the other side. My Sene. Hello. Don't mind me if I land a musket here. I mean, this will not survive, but I'm just being annoying. I'm being cheeky. Uh, there we go. Cavalry can land. There you go. We'll see. Well, actually, we're going to test pretty quickly how strong the Greek naval or city strength is. Not the naval strength at all. Can they do much damage against me? I'm hoping the answer to that is no. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Ooh. Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Tennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, I love you Tombo, Flying Dutch Burbs, thank you everyone for your support, see you all in the next video, goodbye!